And here we are with the chapter 12 video, all the way down to the bottom. It's only four problems, two types of problems. These cover the chi-squared tests. The first type of problem is the chi-squared goodness of fit test. If you look at the structure of this, this is a goodness of fit test question. You're given expected proportions, and you're given observed counts. And from that information, you calculate your chi-squared test statistic. So one is a goodness of fit test. Two, again, look at the structure. You're given expected percents, or the expected distribution. You're given your observations. These are what you actually observe as counts. And well, they actually give you the p-value and ask some things. But this is a goodness of fit test, because you are testing whether or not this hypothesized distribution fits your data good, or well, I guess. Now contrast that with questions three and four, which are tests of independence. Still chi-squared, because you're dealing with categorical variables, but they are tests of independence, because you're comparing two different categorical variables to determine if those categorical variables are independent. So here are the two categorical variables. One is depreci depreciation method, and the other is country. Depreciation method is categorical, because, and we've got the three categories here. And country is categorical, and those are the three categories. So boom. Test of independence, because you're looking for a relationship or testing for a relationship between two categorical variables. Now notice they actually did the calculations for you here, you got up the p-value, degrees of freedom, so that was easy. Here's four. Let's look at this. Again, we're looking at comparing or looking for a relationship between two categorical variables. So this also will be a chi-squared test of independence. Thing with number four is you gotta do the calculations yourself to determine what the expected values are, or the expected values in each of the cells, and the test statistic. So I think four is one we're going to do. I could do f number one, but I'm with, uh, well, number two actually gives you the answer, so we'll do one and four. How does that sound? So let's begin <coughs> number one. So here we are in question number four. This comes from chapter 12, problem number seven. Again, this is a chi-squared goodness of fit test, because we're hypothesizing this as the distribution. We collected 2,000 pieces of data and observed this distribution. And we need to determine if the difference between this, this distribution that we observed and this distribution that we hypothesized is sufficiently large. So let's create our chi-squared test here. Expected. Uh, 0.15, 0.19, 0.22, 0.16, 0.28. Might as well put some titles up there. This is WDUX TV about the ducks. WWTY. WACO, we're wacko for Cheers reruns. WTJW. And OTHER. Yes. Now, before we move on, we'd have to double check that these add up to what we expect them to add up to. Uh, they do. It's one. First step in the chi-squared test, change those expected proportions to expected counts. That's just equal to that proportion times our sample size of 2,000. So if our data perfectly follows this distribution, then we would expect 300 to have watched WDUX, 380 to watch WWTY, etc. But really, what we observe is almost guaranteed, and it's guaranteed in this case, to be something different. Only 182 watched WDUX, 536 to watch WWTY, 354 was for Waco, 151, and then 777. There's a difference between what we observe and what we expect. But is that difference 
large enough that we can conclude that our hypothesized distribution is wrong. To find out, we'll do the chi-square test. First thing we have to do is calculate observed minus expected. This is just equal to what we observe minus what we expect. Copy and paste. Now, little check. What should all five of these add up to? Zero. The second, observed minus expected squared. That's just equal to that to the power of two. Now you know what that caret key is for. It's the, the number of the symbol above the six. Third part would be observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So that's just going to equal observed minus expected squared divided by your expected counts. And our chi-squared test statistic is just going to be the sum of that last row. Degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus 1. So the number of categories is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1 is 4. So we can calculate a critical value. Notice that we're supposed to do this at the 0.10 level, so we're going to look at a 90% critical value. So that'll be equal to chi -sk for chi squared. So critical value, so it's going to be chi -sk dot inv. And for a chi-squared test, we're always looking at the stuff in the right-hand part of the distribution. So we can do RT. We want to find out 10% in the upper part of the chi-squared distribution and 4 degrees of freedom. So our critical value is 7.77944. Our observed value is larger than that. So what we observed is in the critical region. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. That's one way of doing it. We could also calculate a p-value. This is equal to chisk dot dist, because dot dist always gives us a probability, and a p-value is a probability. And again, we want it in the right tail. What we observe is x and the number of degrees of freedom, df. Boom. There's our p-value. I think the p-value is less than alpha. So again, evidence of that we need to reject the null hypothesis. So let's go through this. Uh, show us appropriate to carry out. Remember, the expected values have to be at least 5. Expected values, that would be these expected counts. They are indeed at least five. We're good to go. Chi-squared test statistic, three decimal places. Mm -hmm. There we go. 300. 0 0.605. 0 0.605. So we reject the null hypothesis. Conclude viewing shares of the current rating period do differ. The null hypothesis is they do not. Null is sub zero, which indicates that the difference is zero. We reject that, so the difference is not zero. And that's that. Chi squared goodness of it test. I believe I said four was the next one we're going to do, so let's go ahead and do this one. This is from chapter 12, problem number 20 in the book. Here's our contingency table. We have two categories. For this categorical variable, and we have one, two, three for the other. And since I'm tired of typing, I'll just go ahead and copy this entire table and hope that it copies over into Microsoft Excel. That looks like it did for the most part. Things look kind of funny. Some may say they look funky, but I wouldn't say that. So I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. OK, I did some prettying up. That took a little bit longer than I expected. But let's go ahead and look at this. OK, this is the observed table. So instead of CAO, I'm going to call this 
OBS, OBS for observed. Um, the two categorical variables are computer assisted ordering and delivery time. So this four represents no, they do not. And four of the people were below, or four of the companies were below in de delivery time. First table to create is the expected value table. Expected value is always based on the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis here is independence. Now if we remember back to one of the definitions of independence, two variables are independent if, or two events are independent if the probability of one times the probability of the other is equal to the probability of their intersection. 24 over 40 is the probability of a no. 14 over 40, here's where I'm getting the 40, is the probability of a below. 4 out of 40 is the probability of a no intersect below. So if this probability, 4 over 40, is equal to this probability times this probability, then if that's true for everything, they're independent. It's never going to be true because we're dealing with real data here. So that's where the chi-squared test comes in. Is, or I should say are, they close enough to being independent that we conclude that there's no evidence against it? So, no, the expected counts here is going to equal 24 times 14 divided by 40. So if they are perfectly independent, we would expect 8.4 to be the count in this cell. We observe 4. Eh, is that close? Well, we're not sure yet. So for the yes, the expected for the yes is equal to the number for the yes times below, and again divided by the sample size. So again, if they're independent, we'd expect 5.6 in this cell. We observe 10. I don't know if that's too close. So for the equal, it's going to be 16 times 24 divided by 40. This is equal to 16 times 16 divided by 40. And this is equal to 24 times 10 divided by 40. And this is equal to 16 times 10 divided by 40. So that is our table of expected counts. And then just as with the other chi-square test, we start creating our measures. Um, o my observe minus expected. That table is just going to equal what we observe minus what we expect. Copy, paste. What should all those numbers add up to? Zero. Then the next part was observed minus expected squared. So this is just equal to observed minus expected to the power of 2. And then we had observe minus expected to the power of 2 divided by expected. It's just equal to observe minus expected squared divided by what we expected. Then finally, our test statistic. That's just equal to the sum of all we just calculated. So this is our chi-squared test statistic. Uh, we're setting alpha equal to 0.05. So we can calculate, oh, degrees of freedom first. Degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. Number of rows is 2, minus 1 is 1. Number of columns is 3, minus 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. So our critical value, can is equal to chi. It's a critical value, so it's going to be INV. And this is, all, this is a one-tailed test. All chi-squared tests are one-tailed. So it's going to be the upper or the right tail. 
And the probability, again, is 0 0.05 degrees of freedom. Critical value is 5.99. We observe 8.93. We are in the rejection region. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. We could also do a p-value. Again, this is kysk.dist, because we're looking for a probability. Dot RT, we're in the right tail. X is what we observed, degrees of freedom. P-value is 0 0.011513. Again, p-value less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So we reject the null hypothesis that these two variables are independent. So let's see if we calculate everything we needed to. Um, we reject. We have a couple reasons we reject. Our test statistic is larger than the critical value. It's in the rejection region. Therefore, we reject. Our p-value is less than alpha. Therefore, it's in the rejection region. Therefore, we reject. Um, the test is valid. Well, this comes from the book, so I'm going to let you look up what the requirements are for the chi-squared test. And then since we said that we reject independence, is there a difference between delivery time performance between tur Yeah, the answer is yes. If there was no or zero difference, then we would not reject h sub 0. I rejected it, so we know there's no not zero difference. So again, I will let you look this up in the book. And that's it. We're done with problem four as well. All chi-squared tests have the same format. Observe minus expected squared over expected, add it up. It's just a matter of what is observed, what is expected, and how many degrees of freedom. Everything else is easy. Hopefully this was fun. Take care of yourselves. Bye.